coach Willie Fritz. Uh, Tulane is four and five overall, three and two in the American. Uh, the Green Wave played at USF last week. Tulane won the game 41 to 15. Uh, Tulane is back at home this week to face ECU at Yulman Stadium in New Orleans. That game will be at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central on ESPN News. And as we mentioned earlier in the call, uh, Tulane's kicker Merrick Glover is the American Special Teams Player of the Week. Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us on the call today. If you would just take a minute to tie up the game at USF, please. And we expect to see as you're back at home uh, this week to face ECU. Well, we had a good good effort from all three phases, uh, offense, defense, special teams all played well, uh, played well early coming out of the box. Defensively, we gave up a field goal on the first drive, but really played well the, the rest of the first half uh, against an explosive offense. Ran the ball extremely well, had 368 yards rushing. You know, when that happens, that means your offensive line played well. Uh, Noah Fisher's transfer guy for us and had a chance to play a whole lot of football this year due to injury. He's healthy now and had his best game that he's played. And then one of our tight ends, Charles Jones is also a player of the game for us as well. And he, he blocked ex- extremely, uh, uh, you know, solid blocking, uh, in the run game. And we were impressed with him. He's been a little banged up this year as well. And defensively, Patrick Johnson had another good game for us, had a few sacks and, tackles for loss and, and uh, he continues to keep getting better uh, every single week uh, you know uh, big game this week with ECU you know we've uh, uh, got to make sure that we're uh, accounting for their uh, explosiveness they have on offense they do a good job of taking shots on you deep and running the ball effectively their quarterback's a dual threat guy and then they got a couple of really uh, athletic defensive ends you can jump off the ball and, and cause havoc in the backfield both against the run and the pass so uh we got to you know turn the page move on and, and uh get ourselves prepared for east carolina Take questions for coach willie fritz please star one on your telephone keypad will put you in the queue then the operator will introduce you take our first question from chris Benini from the athletic willie you guys uh kind of still have an outside shot at the division at this point with the way things have kind of shaken up. Uh, what, what have you kind of made of the league this year and, and so many teams who, who still have a lot to play for in November? Well, there's just a lot of good teams in the league. I mean, there's, you know, from top to bottom, it seems like uh, even the teams that are winning a bunch of ball games are playing a lot of close games, uh, you know, so there, there's uh a lot of good coaching, a lot of a lot of dynamic players. I, I just think there's, you know, every week you got to strap it on. If you, if you don't, you know, you're going to get embarrassed. And uh, you know, I think there's probably more parity in this league than any league I've, I've been in. I know there's uh, some teams that have, you know, won, won a bunch of games, but they've also played some close games as well. Sometimes you don't see that. Uh, there's a distinction between maybe the top end and and the, the teams that aren't aren't near the top. So. Excellent league, really. I think it's uh, definitely part of the Power Six. And uh, a few weeks ago, you guys are one of the few teams to to slow down Daryl Henderson at Memphis, or at least keep the ball out of his hands. Um, what was what was your kind of game plan in, in going in to, to to try to stop him? You know, I, I think we got got up and and uh, you know and, and they kind of you know had to get away a little bit from their game plan. Maybe throw the ball a little bit more, but you know, first play of the game, he went I think 45, 48 yards, something like that, and, and he just he's got good movement. He's he's uh, more uh, powerful than probably people give him credit for, and great speed, and also catch the ball. They do a good job of their screen game, getting him to get him the ball out in space, and he'll make you pay for it. So uh, I think he's one of the top running backs in the country. Appreciate it, Willie. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we'll take our next question from Chris Dave from NOLA.com. Hi, Willie. Um, uh, your defensive line, you mentioned Patrick Johnson earlier. I want to get a sense from you. How much do you attribute what your defensive line has been able to do in recent games with these back-to-back wins? But uh, Not only those games, but through conference play, you ranked second in the league and run defense. And what, what kind of emergence have you seen, I guess, just from the beginning of the season and, and where that D-line is at now? You know, I just think we've uh, just improved weekly. Uh, 
you know, we, we kind of switched what we were doing last season. And I think it took us a little while to, you know, get to familiarize ourselves with the, with the scheme. And I think we feel a lot more confident in both coaches and players, uh, you know, and, and we do have a good defensive line. We got, you know, quite a few guys can play up there and, and, uh, Patrick is really, you know, one of the things we talk about all the time is developing our guys, and helping them become better players on a daily basis. And he's one of those guys that I think he's, uh, you know, has gotten better every single game that he's played. He was a guy that played with his hand in the ground, you know, throughout his high school career, both offensively and defensively. And now he's, you know, standing up and playing, and he's really taken to it. What was the, the the switch from last year to this year, and what what are the? Oh, uh, we were we were an even front, even front going to an odd front. A lot of people uh, seem to be doing that, you know, over the last four, five, six years, and and uh, and uh, we joined it as well. And, and you know, I just uh, you know, I, I, I was watching uh, uh, our our game against uh, East Carolina from last season. And, you know, we really look like a complete and total different defense. Just, you know, not not with the players as much as just the structure. I think that's, uh, you know, attributed to, you know, learning and knowing and what, what, what we're doing with it. And uh, you, you talked some weeks ago about trying to find mid-season heroes rather than off-season heroes. How much do you feel like that message is, has kind of gotten through, especially with the recent play? Oh, I think it's it's good. You know, you you, you got to make sure you got these in season hero guys that are you know giving you everything during the season. And, you know, obviously we we've we got a lot of important games coming up, and and uh, you know I talked to our guys today about the fact that you know uh, you know we uh, you know Coach Payton you know with the Saints was talking about uh you know uh, doing a great job handling prosperity. You know, everybody always talks about handling adversity, but you know, we've had a little bit of success here, not a ton, a little bit of success here recently, and we got to continue to keep uh, doing the things that have enabled us to have some success. And, uh, you know, that hasn't always been the case with Tulane, and that's what we've got to be able to do is, is, you know, ratchet it up a notch and, and play even better and have a better week of preparation this week. And then lastly, your assessment of Justin McMillan and his play his second week as a starter. I think he's doing a, a, a nice job. He really, you know, the guy understands the game, handles it, you know, as far as, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of milk in the clock situations there late in the game. And, and then also in the end, the first half, we had to speed up again because clock wasn't in our favor. He just, you know, he played, uh, uh, he, he understands the game of football. I've been impressed with that. And, you know, there's like I told our guys this morning, we have got to do it. A better job throwing the football. Uh, you know, got to be two-dimensional offensively, and uh, and that's everybody. That's you know the offensive line, running backs, uh, tight ends with protection, receivers getting off man-to-man coverage, which we're going to see. We know that, and, and then being accurate with the throw and going the right place. And and uh, you know, so I, I think he's only going to you know get better and better every week. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on, we'll take our next question from Ronnie Woodward from the Greenville Daily Reflector. Hey, Coach. Uh, East Carolina's made uh, so many trips in the past down there and played the Superdome. Obviously, uh, this one will, will be on campus. Just wanted to kind of catch up on that. How has the, the on-campus football stadium been for, for your guys? Has that been a boost for the team and gotten you kind of a, a home field atmosphere? How's that been? You know, I think it's awesome for us. Uh, you know, we, we feel like it's a game changer. It's, it's, it's right in the middle of campus. And it seats 30,000. Every seat is a perfect seat. It really is. And, uh, you know, it just is uh, easy for the students to get to. And, and uh, you know, it's a perfect size for us. I think sometimes, you know, you, you get into those big stadiums and if you're sitting up top, there's there's kind of a rumor of a game going on down there on the field and and uh that was probably the case for us with the, the superdome so you know i'm glad that we've got this i i wouldn't have taken the job to be honest with you we we didn't have this on campus stadium so uh they they did a really nice job with it and uh i think y'all will be impressed when you come over here awesome awesome okay thanks coach 
Thank you. Moving on, we'll take our next question from Jerry Smith, the New Orleans Advocate. Hi, Willie. Is there an update on on Cam Sample? The way his knee got pinned didn't look didn't look great early early in that game, and 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 what is the prognosis for him? No, he, he really was his ankle, and uh, okay. uh, we, we he's going to be all right. We're hoping he's going to be able to go this weekend. Uh, you know, it just was uh, uh, you know we'll just have to see on it, but uh, you know it's early in the week, so he's a tough kid. Well, we'll hopefully he'll be able to go this weekend. And when you were two and five after the tough loss to SMU, you mentioned you know, players mentioned all the goals were still in front of you. And two weeks later, that that's clearly the case. Um, you're really good at keeping an even keel approach. But um, what do you say to the guys going down to the the stretch run now, with the, obviously bowl possibilities and division championship possibilities still in front of you? Well, you know, like I talked about a little bit with the prosperity. Uh, analogy to it with the uh, with the saints you know just you know understand that we we haven't done anything at all yet and uh we need to continue to keep improving uh we're a very young football team as i've mentioned before we've only got 12 guys on the team that were here before i got here at, at, at two lanes so you know we're all kind of learning how to win together and, and you know have that toughness that you got to have in, in sports in order to be successful and uh you know, I know you'll be out there tomorrow, and you're not going to see anything different out of me and our our staff and preparation. And uh, I think we've had, you know, some really good weeks of prep here the last few weeks. We need to we need to continue to keep doing that every week. Thanks. Thank you. Any final questions for Coach Fritz, please? Much appreciate your time as always today. Look forward to talking to you once again next Monday.